there he goes into that drugstore. He's stepping on the scales. Weight, 239 pounds. Fortune, danger. Who is it? The Fat Man. self-conscious sometimes and also very shy. He's conscious of being overweight and will do everything in his power to be self-effacing. In my business, it's not a bad idea either, because when you're on the trail of some of the characters I run into, the more inconspicuous you are, the more chances you have to nab the murderer. And now, here's the fat man in Murder Wears a False Face. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen, runs the old spirit. The trouble I see usually starts with murder. Like the morning I answered Joyce Kenyon's call for help. Private secretary to wealthy Vincent Maitland, the well-known book collector, Joyce looked like the proverbial million dollars. I found her in Vincent Maitland's house on Fifth Avenue. Oh, Mr. Runyon, I'm so glad you're here. This note, it, it, it came in the mail just now. Well, let me have it. I killed my wife, now I'll kill you. An accident for her, a knife for you. Hmm. It's got signature, but... I can't believe he'd write it to me. Who's Scott? Not exactly a friend of yours, is he? Mr. Runyon, he's my fiancée. We're going to get married. Yeah? I just don't know what's happened to him. He disappeared five days ago. I'm just worried sick about him. Why not call the Missing Persons Bureau? Oh, no. The publicity would hurt his business. Scott's a rare book dealer. It might hurt his little girl. I get it now. Scott Pearson, huh? Oh, you know him. I know a little about the rare book business, part of my homemade education. He said he killed his wife. How about that? Scott couldn't kill anybody. His wife died in an auto accident three years ago. Scott was badly hurt in the same crash. Any reason why he'd threaten you? Of course not. He... He's been under considerable nervous strain lately. But, but he wouldn't tell me why. You don't know why he's threatened you or why he's disappeared. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Darling, I'm going to kill you. What? Humpty Dumpty. Scott, where are you? Tell him I want to see him. Yes, I... Scott, Scott, listen to me. What's he saying? Scott, please... I want to talk to you. I'm so worried. Scott. Scott. Oh. He's hung up. He wouldn't answer me. He simply recited Humpty Dumpty. The nursery rhyme? That all? No. His very first words were, Darling... I'm going to kill you. In three minutes, Platt, I had Pearson's call traced. It had been made from his business number. We caught a fast cab to his office the other side of Broadway. It was empty. And everyone I questioned in the building said Pearson hadn't been around for five days. At that point, his girlfriend broke down, but good. So I took her back to my office and told her to stay there. I can't do that, Mr. Runyon. Mr. Maitland won't want to know where I am. It's my job. Is your job or your life more important to you? Well, I... Oh, it's Scott who's important. 
You've got to find out what's happened to him. Then stay here until I get back. You're about a half inch away from murder. You don't want anyone shoving you over the goal line. In the cab, Joyce had told me about Pearson's sister-in-law, Sylvia Lawton. Sylvia was his housekeeper and looked after his daughter after his wife died. She opened the door to me and Pearson's apartment in the East 50s. Mr. Runyon, oh, this is horrible. I, I can't believe Scott would threaten Miss Kenyon this way. So Joyce said. But she also said he'd written the note and she said it was his voice on the phone. You have any ideas about it, Miss Lawton? I can't imagine why Scott would do this. I, I simply don't know what could have happened to him. Where's his little girl? Oh, staying with her grandmother, thank goodness. His fiancée told me he's been pretty nervous lately. What do you think's been worrying him? Scott never told me anything about his business. I only know he's been quite worried in recent weeks. When did he ask Joyce Kenyon to marry him? Just last week. He's known her for only a short time. What do you think of her? Oh, she, she's quite pretty, but I... I don't see what that has to do with Scott's trouble. Don't you? Did you know she was going to call me? Of course. We both agreed we had to start looking for him. Oh... By the way, you might want to. Thanks. Hmm. Seems a good-looking guy. Yes, I... My sister thought he was very handsome. Do you think he killed your sister? I've always thought it was an accident, but... No, I... I, I don't know what to believe. Don't you know anything about Pearson's business at all? What's his reputation in the trade? How many employees does he have? Oh, he has an excellent reputation. He has one man working for him, Harry Lindley. I don't know what Lindley actually does. He's worked for Scott for three years now. Scott doesn't like him, though. And yet he's kept him on his payroll for three years. Where can I get in touch with Lindley? I don't know. He's been out of town for over a week. That's a big help. Do you have anything else I can work on? Well, Scott brought home his account books and correspondence just before he disappeared. Lead me to her, Miss Lawton. Maybe I can read between the lines. Checking over Pearson's accounts, I realized the rare book business was big time stuff. He'd made some really fancy sales. Twenty and thirty thousand bucks a crack. The biggest three years before when he'd sold Vincent Maitland the Shakespeare folio of Troilus and Cressida for 75 G's. Shortly after, before his wife died, he'd taken Harry Lindley on his payroll. His weekly payments to Lindley had become progressively larger. Unusually large. I've seen items like that before. And they've added up to one thing. Blackmail. It was enough to send me over to Vincent Maitland's house again. Well, Runyon, what do you want? My secretary told me about you and her problem, but I don't know if I can help you. You could, if you could tell me where Scott Pearson is. I would if I could. I've been trying to reach him for four days now. Where is he? That's what I'm trying to find out. His fiancée just hired me. Funny you didn't know about it. Anyway, what's your interest in him? The scoundrels ruined my reputation. Three years ago, he sold me a certain rare manuscript. Troilus and Cressida? Exactly. I sold it at a profit last week. Now I find it's a forgery. I've got to find Pearson and get my money and the truth from him. What makes you so sure it's a forgery? Spectroscopic examination of the paper and ink. The paper is genuine 17th century, but not the ink. My buyer's appraiser tested it, something I didn't do when I bought it from Pearson. I confound that phone. Hello? What? No, she isn't here. 
Yes, I have your number. Goodbye. Blasted nuisance. Young idiot keeps calling my secretary. Sounds lovesick. Sounds interesting. Who is he? Interesting? Don't be absurd. But, uh, what does this have to do with Pearson? Why not let me find out? Who's the guy so interested in Joyce Kenyon? Oh, his name's Ron Jordan. Runs a garage in Manhasset. You have his number? Here. See me if you like, but remember this. It's Pearson's number I'm after. Ron Jordan's filling station and garage was on a lonely stretch of road on Long Island, down near the shore. It didn't look like any potential gold mine. The garage at back was all locked up. A skinny guy in overalls was out front whittling on a stick, using his knife as though he was carving up his worst enemy. I pulled up to a stop beside the gasoline pumps. Hi, fill her up. Yes, sir. You, Ron Jordan? That's right. Get in touch with Joyce yet? Get in touch... Say, what is this? Just my own private survey, Jordan. Why so interested in Joyce? Look, mister, you're begging for a poke in the nose. Keep pumping, sweetheart. I don't like being poked, and I have the weight to back it up. Now, how about Joyce? Wait a minute. Who are you? My name's Runyon, private detective. Joyce hired me to find her fiancé, Scott Pearson. Oh, the heel. Oh, a friend of yours. He's no friend of mine. Joyce was going to marry me until she met Pearson. She was, huh? When did that happen? This summer while I was busy here. The summer season that brings in the dough. <laughs> I worked like a dog. I lost my girl. You sound like you threw in the sponge pretty early. Well, I went back home to Pittsburgh... Well, that didn't help. I just got back this morning. Where did Joyce meet him? At Maitland? Yeah. He started work there last June. How come Joyce wants you to find him? Pearson's disappeared. And he's sent her a threatening letter. Joyce, too, huh? Here, take a look at this. When'd you get this? This morning. I've been trying to call Joyce about it. Hey, go, go ahead, read. I killed my wife, Jordan. Now I'll kill my next wife, and you'll be double cheated, not only double crossed. Hmm. Typewritten like the first one. He's a maniac, Runyon. All the signs of paranoia are here, all right. Oh, find him. Find him before something happens to Joyce. Still lugging the torch around, huh? Never mind that. Find him and let him know. For his own sake, Runyon, if he harms Joyce in any way, I swear I'll... I'll kill him. When I went back to my office, I found Joyce Kenyon seated in my desk chair. And she jumped like a startled gazelle when I walked in. Oh. Although, I must say, I've never seen a startled gazelle in nylon. Oh. Oh, it's only you, Mr. Runyon. Yeah, it sure is. You've had a long wait, haven't you? It seemed like an eternity. Any visitors? Not even a phone call. Have you found out anything yet? Well, I just saw Ron Jordan. Ron? How did you find out about him? Maitland told me. Jordan called you and I went back to Maitland's house. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Runyon. Speaking. Vincent Maitland. I've had a call about my toilet and Cressida from Harry Lindley, the chap who works for Pearson. He wants me to meet him in Pearson's office. We'll see him together, Maitland. I'll be right over. I still don't get this, Runyon. I don't get it at all. I think we'll find out Linley's been blackmailing Pearson over your Troilus and Cressida. That's why Pearson had him on his payroll. You mean Linley knew it was a forgery? Yeah. Now that Pearson's vanished, Linley figures he can make another buck telling you it's a fake. He's crazy if he thinks he'll get anything out of me for that. Well, here's the office. 
Let me handle Lindley. I'm going to get my hands on Pearson, that's all. Looks like... Oh, great brother. Scott. Yeah. Looks like we're too late. It's as true now as it ever was. Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> slugged with a mechanic's wrench. The wrench lay near the typewriter stand. Alive, the corpse had been a little guy in a snappy chalk-striped suit. A sharp little guy with a pinched rodent face. It wasn't Scott Pearson, that much was certain. It's... it's Harry Lindley. Shut the door, Maitland. What? Let's get out of here. I can't get messed up in anything like this. Shut the door! We'll give the place a quick once-over first. See if our stiff was really Harry Lindley. You don't touch him. You fingerprints. Don't worry about fingerprints. It's his wallet. Well, what's in it? A ten dollar bill, pocket comb, driver's license. It's Harry Lindley, all right. A scrap of paper with a phone number on it. Why, that, that's my phone number. Okay. You'll keep that for your collection. Is that all he had? Yeah, he traveled light. It can go back in his pocket. Hey, let's get out of here, Runyon. We found out what we want to know. You won't find anything. There's nothing here. Isn't there? What about this? What? Look at this note on the typewriter. My final warning before you die, I tell you... That's all? Yeah. Somebody was interrupted. Lindley, you mean? Or Pearson. I'll compare the typing with the other two notes. Suppose I ought to answer that? Are you out of your mind, Runyon? We've got to get out of here. Take it easy. What going to lose? <laughs> no. No, he's been gone for three days. Goodbye. Huh. That's funny. You know, uh, what was it? That was Sylvia Lawton. This phone rings at Pearson's home, too. What's that got to do with it, Runyon? Let's go for heaven's sake. Wait a second. Here's something else. Now what? A man's cufflink. A monogram cufflink. Let me see those initials. S.P. Scott Pearson. Could be. Or Sam Price, or Steve Palmer. It has to be Pearson. You said Lindley was blackmailing him. His cufflink was torn off in the struggle. Yeah. Well, now we can blow, Maitland. We've got to notify the police, but I don't intend to welcome them when they get here. We left the office without being seen. Down in the lobby, Maitland went his way, and I called Mackenzie at homicide. Then I scooted back to my own office. My phone was ringing as I came down the hall. I wondered why Joyce Kenyon didn't answer it. When I opened the door, I saw why. She was gone. Hello, Runyon speaking. Oh, Mr. Runyon, this is Sylvia Lawton. I've been trying to get you. I've been out. Nobody answered, huh? Why, no. I've called several times. Don't you have a secretary? Only at Christmases and New Year's. What's up, Miss Lawton? I... I've just received a note from Scott. It's horrible. Fantastic. I can imagine. What's it say? Now Joyce will die, too. Not like Helen. A blade through the heart. Just one day more. What's the postmark on the envelope? Long Island, Manhattan. The others were postmarked Grand Central Station. You sure it's from Pearson? I know his signature. The message is typed like the other one. All right, Miss Lawton. I'll see you later. What's 
Captain, Mr. Rowan. What the... Oh. Where have you been, little Miss Muffet? I just couldn't stand being cooped up in this office. I, I simply had to get out and walk around. How far did you walk? To Pearson's office? What do you mean? I haven't been outside the building. Harry Lindley's dead. I found him murdered in Pearson's office. Lindley? The little man who worked for Scott? Yeah. Surprised? What do you know about him? Oh, only that Scott didn't like him, but if he's dead, oh, who could have done it? What do you think? Oh, I, I don't know what to think. I, I'm all mixed up now. I, I've never been so scared in all my life. If you're so scared, why did you leave my office? I told you why. I had to get out and move around. I've been walking up and down these corridors. You may have to prove that, sweetheart. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why would I kill Harry Lindley? He was struck from behind. He might have been mistaken for Scott Pearson. But I never want to kill Scott. You know that. I don't know anything from what you've told me. You didn't even mention Ron Jordan, remember? I... I forgot about Ron. That's all over anyway. Not for Ron, it isn't. And Lindley was killed with a mechanic's wrench. If you're accusing Ron or, or even myself... Just stay right here, sweetheart. You're still too young to die. Even in the electric chair. <laughs> Leaving Joyce in my office, I drove back to Ron Jordan's garage. Fog was creeping in from the sound like a gray shroud covering the dying afternoon. Nobody was out front. The garage doors were open a crack, so I started towards them. Wisps of fog touched my face with clammy fingers, and then, all at once... Who is it? Who's there? Hi, Jordan. What are you doing back here, Renyon? What do you want? What's wrong? Why so jumpy? You're crazy. There's, there's nothing wrong with me? Not much. You're shaking like an old-time Model T. Come on, quit kidding. Hey, come on, I'll buy you a Coke. Sounds like bribery, Jordan. You <coughs> come on. Let go of my arm. You want it broken at the wrist or the elbow? Run, you know. I'll do. <laughs> All right. Okay. Harry Lindley was killed with a wrench. We'll go check your tool rack. Now, now look, wait a minute, Runyon. I, I don't know any Lindley. You're making a mistake, Runyon. Then why the shakes? It's not that cold, sweetheart. I, I'm upset about Joyce, that's all. I, I've been thinking about her and Pearson. I've been getting mad about a minute. He's too old for her, eh? And he has a family. Sure. A daughter. The kid may not even like Joyce. Funny you should start worrying about that when you know Pearson's already threatened to kill Joyce. Open those doors. Now, turn on the light. Now, look, Runyon. Like I told you, I've been aware. I just opened up back here. Save it, sweetheart. Save your breath for the D.A. That's Scott Pearson in that truck, isn't it? Isn't it? You're not getting me for this run in up to you. No, I won't let you. I'm getting out. Come back here, Jordan. I'll shoot. I aimed for his legs, but he was already outside. I raced after him, but fog swallowed him up. I groped my way back to Scott Pearson in the garage, slugged from behind like Harry Lindley, his body in an open delivery truck. He'd been dead several days. I went through his pockets and came up with a sales slip from a music shop on 42nd Street. After calling the police and spreading the alarm for Jordan, I called my office. No answer. Joyce Canyon was gone again. I climbed into my car and headed for Manhattan. When I reached my office... Runyon, where have you been? 
Why the personal visit, Maitland? I wanted to know what progress you've made. I was just leaving. Yeah? Come on in. Well, how, how about it, Runyon? Have you found out anything new about Pearson? Yeah. He's dead. Murdered. What? I found him in Jordan's garage. He's been dead for several days, maybe a whole week. But, but, the, but that means... It, it means a lot of things, Maitland. You know Pearson's home number? No, I don't. What good will it do to call there? Skip it. Uh, here it is. Hey, wait a minute. What? Pearson's number, residence and office. Remember, his business phone rings at home as well as at the office. Well, there's nothing unusual about that. Not to you, maybe. But not many businessmen have the same phone number for two different addresses. Well, what of it? What difference does it make? With what I found in Pearson's pocket, it turns this case right onto its ear. Come on. We're getting over to Pearson's apartment right away. What's all this about, Runyon? You'll find out. Yes? Oh, oh, Mr. Runyon. I thought you were going to stay in my office. I I'm awfully sorry, but Miss Lawton called you. When I talked to her, I, I, I decided to come and stay with her. I, I thought I'd be safer here. You have funny ideas about being safe. Where's Miss Lawton? Oh, excuse me. She's busy in the next room. Hello? Darling, I'm going to kill you. Uh, Scott! Humpty Dumpty. Scott, Scott, where are you? You mean that's person on the wire? Runyon, that can't force. be. Oh, Scott! All the king's Mr. horses. Mr. Runyon, he's saying the, the same thing men. again. Humpty Dumpty, eh? Oh, I thought so. You can stop that record, sweetheart. What in the world? Get your hands above the desk, Miss Lawton. Just what is the meaning of this? It won't do any good to hide that record player now. I happen to know Pearson's already dead. Dead? I don't believe it. Oh, stop it. I know you killed him. So why try to bluff me? I see. Get your hands up, Mr. Runyon. What on earth is this all about? You too, Joyce. And you, Mr. Maitland. Now, look, you can't be serious. Oh! My arm! I'm very serious, you see. What did you first suspect, Mr. Runyon? When I found Pearson's coupling. Maitland thought it was torn from his sleeve during a struggle with Lindley, but there wasn't any struggle. The cufflink was planted evidence. You couldn't have suspected me, then. You couldn't. You're right. It wasn't until I realized Pearson had his office phone at home. I'd found a slip from a music shop in his pocket. Then I remembered his Humpty Dumpty message. I knew he'd bought one of those record-your-own-voice records. Darling, I, I'm going to kill you. Because it was for his daughter, he was kidding her. So that's why he laughed. Yeah. Sylvia here used his business wire to call his house number and then played the record to you. You're very clever, Mr. Runyon. Keep your hands you up. You were too clever, sweetheart. You'd been in love with Pearson a long time, hadn't you? For years. When he told me he was going to marry this little snip, he asked me to drive out to see Jordan with him to prevent future trouble. That's where I killed him. Killed? Oh, no! Jordan stumbled across his body just before I got there. He got panicky and ran. Stupid fool. I wanted to destroy Scott completely. His memory, his reputation, everything. What made you kill Lindley? I had to. He came across me typing another note in Scott's office. He guessed the truth. Unfortunately for him. And for you. You spun your last platter as an amateur disc jockey, baby. Stay where you are. I still have a gun. It won't do you any good. Hand it over. Mr. Onion, look out! <laughs> oh, that's all from you, Sylvia. Oh, you... There now, relax. How's the arm, Ethan? Just grazed. Uh, nothing serious. Well, it'll be serious for our little friend here. <laughs> When the D.A. finishes with her, shooting you will pound another nail in that coffin that's waiting for her up the river. Well, that's that. 
I spend my life in getting into trouble and getting out of it. But at the same time, I generally manage to get some other people in and out of trouble, too. Be seeing you again. So long. Thank you.